So here's something that I've thought about a lot. I've thought about it for years, and it's something I will go back to every every once in a while. Um, you know, I do a lot of work on the guitar, a lot of practice, a lot of study, and one of the things I've learned over time is that the more you orient yourself right at your goals, the faster and the better and the more efficiently you will achieve them. Sounds pretty straightforward when I say it like that. But looking back, I spent years kind of spinning my wheels because I didn't really want to think about what are my goals. Uh, I was kind of afraid of what I might find. What I would have found was that I didn't really have any. I just thought, I'll do a bunch of guitar work. And some of that stuff, I mean, a lot of that stuff helped me, but there definitely were some things that were missing because I just didn't point myself at them. And then I could say, well, I really can't do without these things and I need them. So uh, I'm going to study them because they are a direct path to my goals and, and I know that now. Okay. So one of the things I think about is what is the most important thing when you're playing the guitar? Not an easy question to answer. And I'm not sure if I can. But there are so many things about music making and guitar playing that you'll want to have you'll want to have a handle on. You know, you need a certain level of you know control. You know, control over techniques and control over your sound. You need a certain knowledge for. Um, what kind of music you're playing and using dynamics and phrasing, paying attention to whatever style you're, you're, you're playing and all these kinds of things. And we could go into detail on any one of those things. Uh, and all those things are important. But music really is subjective. So when I started to think about what is the most important thing though, I just started to cross all these things off the list. Because I just thought, well, sure, you'll want to do this, and you'll want to do it such and such a way. But some people are going to like that, and some people aren't. Well, sure, you want to have a handle on this and be able to, to utilize it. But some people are going to notice that, and some people won't. Well, sure, you want to understand what this is, but some people say do it this way, some people say do it that way, and they're both equally convinced. So what do you do, right? Well... There's, there's really two things that I want to say. One, I want to talk about a general kind of evaluation that I think we need as musicians. And then two, I'll, I'll just flat out tell you what I think is most important. Uh, as of today, is the conclusion that I've come to. Out of all the qualities of playing the guitar, you know, given the fact that so many things are subjective, given the fact that you can't make everybody happy, but given the fact that you have to be an artist, or why are you doing what you're doing? Uh, that's how I came to my conclusion. So, I think what we need is to continually sharpen this skill as time goes by. As we learn, as we play music that we know well, as we learn new music, as we have lessons, as we teach lessons, whatever. Okay, for anybody, I think this is one of the skills we need to continue to develop. And that is the ability to discern between different musical priorities. Okay, having the ability to look at a piece of music, look at the style, think about the instrument you're playing, what it does, and yes, think about yourself not in terms of what you want, but in terms of who you are. In terms of your artistic goals. In terms of what you feel like you should do. It's different to do what you want and what you feel like. And then to do what you feel like you need to do. 
for reasons of which you are very convicted about. That is different. It doesn't mean if you play an instrumental piece for somebody on guitar, they're going to be able to understand the difference. But it does, it does mean something very different in terms of where you're coming from. Okay? If you just do what you want all the time, what about the music that you're playing? What about who wrote it? What about what they were going for? What about the instrument that you have? What about the person that built it? What about what it was made to do? What about what it really loves to do and really wants you to do with it? Okay? And then yourself. If you just do what you want all the time, I hope you're a genius. <laughs> I hope you're really, really brilliant because I think that's the only way that you can get away with that because I think some people just by thinking and just by doing, they can actually, they actually kind of like learn and grow and do all at the same time. There are people like that. Okay. But I don't like to tell people that because then everybody thinks that's them. I'm not that way. Oh my God, I have to work so hard. It's ridiculous. I'm so far from being a, gen a genius, it's, it's not even funny, okay? Geniuses don't have to work the way that I have to work. They just do, and, and they, they learn on the fly because they're geniuses, right? So what about for the rest of us? We are coordinators of bringing these elements together. The piece that you're playing, what it has to offer. The instrument you're playing, what it has to offer. And then I guess the way I like to say it is where you are on your artistic journey. So we need to highlight things that need to be highlighted and we need to use these factors to, to bring out the strong and characteristic aspects of all these things. Okay? This is what this music says. Um, it's a slow, sad piece and you know this guy wrote it about the day that his wife passed away. Very sad. Okay, So I'm going to play it with very subtle but very finely tuned dynamics and I'm going to use a very subtle sense of rubato most of the time the pushing and pulling of the tempo but there's a couple moments where I'm just going to jam it in deep and it's going to hurt okay but I'm not going to do that the whole time I'm going to save it okay so the rest of the time it's very controlled but then when the time is right Oh, yeah, because I know what this piece is about. Okay. Okay, what about the guitar? Well, um, you know, bringing to life the tonal qualities that are going to accentuate that. You know, if you hear sad, sad music, sorrowful music, do you want really, like, sharp and pingy sounds? Does that make you feel sad? What about really lush and full warm tones? You know? Does that make you feel more sad? What about something in the middle? Okay. Now, I would choose one of those, but you, you might choose something different based on what your guitar can do. Okay. Maybe I have a particular guitar where I'm like, man, when I make bright sounds on this guitar, it sounds somber as all get out. It's really special. So I might make that choice. And then you as an artist, you know, what are you trying to use this piece to build? to learn about, to gain. If you're not doing that, then you're going through the motions, okay? And if you want to be prepared for a certain instance where you want to feel that way, that's that's okay. I mean, I, I don't know. But if you're learning something new, I think you want to push yourself creatively. So what are your goals and aspirations? Are you as good as you want to be? Have you thought about music as much as you're ever going to think about it? Or are you trying to figure something out here that's new? So your ability to, to discern all of that, I think is the most important, one of the most important skills. It may be the most important skill. Uh, and then you could decide, well, I think this is most important or that is most important. Of course, I can't give that kind of answer. And at the beginning... I think a lot of people, they just can't think about any of that. 
they're trying to learn basic techniques and get a handle on it. They're trying to learn music. They're trying to get that one bar chord to ring and it's so hard. Yeah, yeah, you got a lot to do. So you're probably not ready for all that. But what happens once you start knocking out these challenges? Okay. And some of these things start working more, what feels like on their own. Well, now what? Um, you start to focus less on things like that and more on your awareness of bringing things together. Okay. And highlighting the most of what it has to offer. And I think it's actually more, I think people that do this and they play great music, it sounds like them, you know. I, I think, uh, you know, my teacher used to say, don't remember the mood you bring to a piece. Remember the mood the piece brings to you. And I've never known anyone that was a better example than him of that. Um, you know, I call it getting out of the way. I've, I've never known someone who was so brilliant at being a musician, but was so unbelievably skilled at getting out of the way. O almost, almost unbelievably so. To where you just feel like the guitar is speaking for itself, the music is speaking for itself, because it has so much life. Yet he was the coordinator of all of that. It was the point of all his work. It wouldn't be possible if he had not brought it all together. So your ability to take advantage of things that happen in different instances and different pieces of music, if that becomes very sharpened, I think you just become someone that people really want to listen to. Okay, And it doesn't just extend to, like, let's say, a piece from the guitar repertoire, because I want to give you an example from my like real life that I heard. Because uh, I've been thinking about this for a long time, so you might play music, you might play pieces from the guitar repertoire, right? You might write your own pieces, composition. You might arrange music, so you take a, a pop tune or popular song, song from a movie, video game, whatever, make an arrangement for it on the guitar. I do all those things, and I love doing all those things. Uh, I think they're great, lots of fun, lots of uh, learning, lots of advantages to be had, all kind of stuff. Okay. So one time, uh, I was watching this guitar concert online, and I'm watching this guy play, and he gives a really nice concert. I was really enjoying it. I liked his playing. He was a um, quality player. I liked his guitar that he was playing. Um, was, was enjoying it, okay? And he played pretty much, I think it was all classical guitar repertoire. And then the last thing that he played is he said, I'm going to play my arrangement of Somewhere Over the Rainbow. So I'm like, cool, you know, that's different. <laughs> so he starts to play his arrangement, and there was like a minute and a half to two minutes of all this stuff. All this technical going here, going there, doing all this different kind of things and it was very impressive but I was just thinking when are you going to play the song and then one and a half to two minutes in he finally gets to the song okay now here's what I'm talking about I would argue that that approach could be more properly handled. It could be it could be better placed. And I'm talking about this as a continually developing skill. Because this dude was a serious musician, okay? But there's something that you feel when you're like, I really want to do this because I know I can do it and it's impressive and it's cool and I really want to do it. Okay. But the more that you think about that, what I feel is the more you learn not to do it when you don't need to do it, save it. When you need to do it though, oh my God, do it all the way. Pull out all the stops. Use all of that, okay? My teacher was also a master at that. He wouldn't throw in anything that he didn't think the music required. 
And he would say, you know, sometimes I figure something out technically and I'm not really sure what to use that for. So I'll just think, I'm going to just put it in my bag and, and, and I'll find a place to use it later. I mean, he didn't even have a use. He was, he was learning how to do things that he didn't even have a use for yet. But at some point, he would work it in, okay? Now, this didn't make me dislike this homeboy's arrangement. It was very, it was very um, well played, well arranged, okay? He's a very, he was a very smart guy, and I, wouldn't ha- I would have no problem with anybody liking it. But I couldn't help but feel that it was misplaced. Okay, why do I feel that way? Well, what does the music require? Okay, if you know the song Somewhere Over the Rainbow, think about it for a second. When are you going to hear this song? Are you going to go see the orchestra? And are they going to play Somewhere Over the Rainbow? I mean, they, they might, but typically? Um, are you going to hear it, like, you know, on TV in the background? If you find a video of somebody playing it, you know, how, how are they going to be playing it? It's a simple tune, right? The simple tune is very catchy. It's very beautiful. And there's nothing wrong with simple. Simple is hard to do when it comes to music. And the way that it's initially presented, just, you know, with the main thing being it's sung by the voice, uh, that's how we know the song. That's how the song originated. So that simple delivery, I think, is is important. So with, with its conception, with whoever wrote it, I can't remember who wrote it right now, but whoever wrote it, that was their... I, I'm, I would be led to believe that's what they were going for. Because they didn't turn out... They didn't turn into this huge, fleshed-out, giant thing for an orchestra. It's a simple tune to be played at a really impactful moment sung by a person, okay? So what does it need? Well, I would say it needs a delivery that to highlight those things. And anything that you do with it should fill that role. It might sound limiting, but I don't really think it is. Because you can still do a million different things with it. There's still a ton of things that you could manipulate, um, which I won't go into because this video is already going to be long enough. But it's it doesn't feel limiting. It, it it simply feels like getting your priorities straight and then taking advantage of that. It will, it will help you make your decisions. Okay, so this huge, giant, fleshed out, technically impressive intro, I think, has no place if it's going to come down to it. It just doesn't. So, do I think that guy shouldn't have done that? Not really. I just think, he, what I was thinking was, bro, if you're going to sit down and do all this stuff, which is really technically impressive, you should have just written your own piece. Composition. So he was in arrangement, and then he's got this song, and then this is these are his devices. And I'm like, dude, you just move that over to composition? It changes everything. Okay, now we don't know the piece. We've never heard it before. You wrote it. So you're making the goals. And you are lining out all these things as much as you want. I want this piece to do this, that, and the other. And now we're all on board with it. Because we have no previous association. We want to see what you're doing. And you can set all those parameters. I want a piece that does this and uses the harmonics and all these like... Flowing arpeggios. Yeah, great. Great. Then, you know, when you have someone trying to simply sing that piece, it's, that's not going to work. <laughs> because that is not what that music uh, has most to offer. Right? So I, that's what I was thinking. And I was like, you know, at best, this is like an exercise. This huge setup to the actual song. But at worst, it's misplaced, highly valuable, but misplaced skills. And so I, I think that stuff really makes a big difference. And when you hear great musicians, they are also really great at that. You know, some people might say, well, they're really great at making music or making nice sounding music, whatever. Okay, sure. But they're also really great at those choices. 
you know, when they arrange what the music needs. And you still have to decide what the music needs. So, um, you know, I don't, I don't ever have any fears of thinking it's not going to sound like me. I'm making the decisions. But I'm making them based on how I can best help the scenario. And, and the things that you can use to best bring it to life. Right? So, the skill of kind of being the mental conductor with your elements. You've got the piece of music, the things that it does. Uh, you know, what kind of piece is it? Is it an arrangement? Is it a composition? What are the goals of the piece? Um, the things that your instrument does. And then who you are as an artist. What are you trying to be? Okay. When I see great players play, it looks to me like they're reaching. It just looks that way. It looks to me like they're trying to get as much of something, get in touch with something as much as they can. And that's what they do when they play. I, I wouldn't know. I can't say for sure. It's just what it looks like. They're not just sitting there rehearsing. They're not just doing this over and over again. It's so much more than that. If they can already play a piece, note perfect, and do everything they want all the time, well, now what? How do they push themselves? They're trying to coordinate. One of the things, maybe, they're trying to coordinate these things even more finely tuned. Trying to get even more out of it. So I would just argue for them, it's not them doing whatever they want. It's doing whatever you feel like is necessary for the music. And every step that you do that, it puts another aspect of life into your playing. And then that translates to the, to the listener as, this whole thing is like its own thing, its own organism, and it's functioning independently. And, um, and that's how you appreciate it. And then the listener is totally convinced that's the way that it should go. So, um, I was thinking about this recently and I thought, well, you know, I have my, my opinions, but I, I think the skill of putting all these things together really can't be understated. And your opinions can work into it, you know. If you feel the need, let's pretend that this guy that I mentioned felt the need to really mess with Somewhere Over the Rainbow, then he, he did that, Okay. I would disagree with that type of approach, but if that was someone's approach, that would be the way to do it. I want to write a two-minute intro that sounds pretty much nothing like the actual music. So, you, you did it, right? But I would just say you can use those same skills, and they can actually be better utilized in a different scenario. So it does depend on your goals. Um, but to me, if you look at all of those aspects, you look at the piece that you're arranging, it's going to tell you what it needs. It's going to say, you know, the more you, the more in tune you are with these things. Uh, it's going to say, don't leave this behind. Be sure you do this. There's a million different ways to do this, but be sure this is on the silver platter that you serve up. Um, and I think that the more you strive to make these decisions, the the quicker and the more convicted you become on making them. Mm -hmm.